Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be taking a look through my collection of vintage Penguin books numbered 2200 up to 2400, dating from the mid-1960s. Some absolutely fantastic stuff to show you today. So sit back, relax, and let's get to it. Okay, so we'll start off with this crime title here. Michael Innes, or Inns, The Daffodil Affair. And um, if the cover designers are mentioned, like this one here, Alan Aldridge, I will mention that as we go through these. Actually, quite a nice sort of uh, a cover design, and almost like Venetian blinds, isn't it? Um, and uh, using the uh, the famous marble grid there. Then we got two two o four. This is a PG Woodhouse. Now, I don't particularly like. I've said it before on the channel. I'm not a, a massive fan of these sort of cartoony. PG Woodhouse covers. Um, yeah, Jeffrey sold it and he did loads of them. Um, so I'm not a great fan of them, but um, they are, I guess they are what they are. This was the trend back then and they wanted, Penguin just wanted them to sort of appear, um, you know, like as a humour novel. Uh, it's exactly the same with this one, Uckridge. I absolutely adore P.G. Woodhouse. I think he's a fantastic author. But these editions, they just don't make me want to read him. <laughs> I just prefer, well, nowadays, uh, the ones I read are those beautiful Everyman hardbacks, which is just gorgeous, those uh, where they've re-released his entire output, and I do recommend those. Um, now, this is the first of several B-format books. If you have a look at that compared to a normal penguin, you can see there's like a centimetre taller and a centimetre wider, and that's the B-format as opposed to the A-format. And penguin use this more and more as we see as time goes on uh, and they used a lot of them on artists so this is the penguin andre francois and uh, you see this is a book of book of artwork book of cartoons in this particular case as i said there's quite a lot of these to go through and we've seen we'll see some brilliant ones today uh, my favorite of all is the uh, the penguin Heath Robinson who I really like as a as an illustrator. And uh, next time, not this time round, but next time we will have um, a look at the most controversial penguin of all, uh, which was an art book, which is uh, Massacre by Cine. So uh, that's a fantastic one to look forward to next time. Um, scholarship at Stake two two one three. Another one with uh, some cartoons inside there. Didn't actually mention who the uh, cover artist was on that one. Man Meets Dog. Comrade Lorenz. Nice copy of these. Uh, some of these I got uh, fairly recently. I was able to pick some up from a, a Penguin book dealer, which was quite handy. That was a particularly nice, nice edition of that one. Some of these later on... Um, I've had for many, many years, and they actually got hit by my son when he was very, very young, when he was having his breakfast, and I'll show you those in a minute. Um, the Price of Glory, Alastair Horn. This is looking at the uh, Verdun in 1916. And some of these I've had for many years, so they've not been through sort of the cleaning process. Other ones have come my way yeah, in the last sort of 12 months or so, but um, I am trying to up my content of books from this sort of period here's another one in uh, b format the penguin book of the renaissance j h plum big thick heavy book this 10 10 shillings and sixpence so it wasn't cheap by any means and uh, it's got illustrated throughout and these can be the sorts of books that are probably quite tricky to track down nowadays as opposed to something like this which was uh, quite more mass market um, this is the last time sadly that penguin used the distinctive 87th precinct banner along the top there um, but i do absolutely love ed mcbain and uh Towards the tail end of the 1960s, sadly, Penguin lost the rights to publish his books and they went briefly over to the New English Library um, for a while. But I always thought the Penguin editions were really, really great. And there's a few more of those to see today. Uh, 2221, Owls and Satires. 
David Price Jones. Very interesting sort of a pictorial cover, that one. Cover designed by Brian Hayes. Photographed by Robert Croxford. So it's almost like it's a, a vase or a pot that's been smashed, isn't it? That one's seen better days. <laughs> now this one, um, Connoisseur's SF. Um, I've had this one for quite some time and it has suffered, sadly, look at that. The spine has completely suffered on that one and it's it's sun bleached. Um, so this is one I wouldn't mind replacing at some point, but um, because I love uh, the science fiction aspect, I'll probably keep this one as a nice reading copy if I can find a, a replacement for that one. Now, probably the most boring book we'll see today is the, the Penguin, <laughs> Penguin Science Survey 2226 from 1965, Part B. I mean, honestly, probably the driest subject. Oh, look at this. It's actually a, a promo copy. Who'd have thought that this book published on the 29th of April? So it was uh, like a review copy or, or an advanced one. And that's just a little slip there from Penguin themselves, which I do love. That's probably why I've ended up picking it up. Um, but other than that, it's probably quite a dry old subject. Nuncle and other stories. So I thought at first glance that was a bit of Cornish wear on the front, but um, it doesn't look quite like the thing. Um, cover photograph Herbert Spencer. So we've got a, having a mixture of artwork covers and photograph covers. And that's fine. I don't mind that. I don't mind that. But it's nice to see Penguin, how the covers have progressed over time. Now, this particular one uh, by John Wyndham, I've actually got two copies of. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know I'm a huge, huge fan of John Wyndham. This wasn't one of my all time favourites of his, but it's still a, a good one. Brilliant stuff. And I do recommend uh, Wyndham. If you've never tried him, sort of stories with a bit of a bit of a twist. Um, the Fire Next Time, James Baldwin. Yeah, looking at uh, it says re reviewing this the short but powerful study of the Negro problem in America. I'm looking at uh, racial issues in the States. Very, very thin book that one but um that's the sort of book you would have expected penguin to publish as a penguin special i'm just looking at the date on this um they published it in michael joseph which was penguin's hardback imprint in 1963 and in paperback by this one here 1964. so that gives you sort of an idea of when these this particular batch we're looking at it is all sort of around the mid 1960s um, here's another great cartoon book here, Searle in the 60s. This is Ronald Searle, who done a lot of work for Penguin. Once again, a selection of cartoons. And sometimes on dealers' catalogues, you see cartoon books listed separately. Now, I'm going to just pause there, pull the camera out just a touch. So, 2240, Ship of Fools. Catherine Ann Porter, a nice copy of this one, isn't it? Charles Redmond did the cover drawing on that. That's a real mint one, that. that's never been read. Nice edition of that. Expensive though, seven or six. Look how bright the spine is. Knight's Black Agent, John Bingham. 2241. Cover design, Anne Gibson on that one, this crime one. Gotta admit, the 60s penguin crime is just fantastic to look at, aren't they? Now, here's another one in B format. Now, this is something a bit different. The London Nobody Knows, Geoffrey Fletcher. So, I'm guessing this is what? Unseen London? Something like that? Yeah, illustrated as well. So, it's maybe like a, an early hidden London book, possibly. It's interesting. I bet that's a good read, that one. I like um, Hidden London stuff. There's so much, isn't it? Such an old city. There's so much to uh, see in it. Here is another one, another B format on the trot. Uh, another artist, Osbert Lancaster. Once again, an artist who did an awful lot for Penguin over the years. Book covers, for example. Fantastic, aren't they? He, of course, did the uh, 
Anthony Pohl books, Dance to the Music of Time. Not all of them, but he did the ones that Penguin published. So this is the first May Grey, and what a great jacket that is, isn't it? Loads to see on that. So this really appeals to me because there's a lot to have a look at. So it looks like that's the Ritz in Paris. Not sure where that is up there. There's May Grey on a sort of a nameplate there. Mysterious Death of the Ambassador. Cover design by Denise York. Photos by Chris Marker. Lovely, isn't it? Now, I know I've been promising it for a while that I'd be doing um, a special looking at um, Simonon in Penguin or in vintage paperback in general because I have got stuff from other publishers which is of a vintage variety. The only thing is I've compiled a list of the Simonons that I'm missing in Penguin and I'm still missing quite a few so I'm trying to track them down but it's a work in progress and I'd like to get virtually complete before I uh, film that dedicated video but believe me it's on its way. Um, J.D. Salinger, obviously uh, not one of the more famous ones. Still quite a, quite a, a desirable little title, that one. Here's another real mint copy here, Error of Judgment, Pamela Johnson. That's absolutely mint, that. Cover drawing by Terence Greer. Very nice indeed. Now this one is a really contra. Well, it was a slightly controversial when it was published, but it's now become um, a very expensive and important uh, Penguin book. It's a Silent Spring. So um, Rachel Carson, I think this is uh, looking at. It's about environmental. Uh, you know the use of pesticides and also you know, sort of the rise um, in in climate change but it was a very very early book looking at that subject but i think predominantly it's about the use of sort of pesticides um in you know how we how we get our foods um quite quite scarce these days and um when copies turn up they're usually very expensive so this is one to sort of keep your eyes peeled for you can sort of see it's got a really distinctive one. This is the only one I, I've ever had. And um, thankfully, I, I had a copy in my collection before I found out it was worth a lot of money. Um, but that's the reason why. Um, cover design, Germani Facita. So, yeah, keep a little look out for this one. Now, what we have to face is not an occasional dose of poison, which has accidentally got into some article of food, but a persistent and continuous poisoning of the whole human environment. So that sort of sums it up in, in a nutshell there, doesn't it? Backward Sex, Ian Cross, another one of those minters, Charles Mo Mosley. If only they were all like that, eh? <laughs> it would be lovely. <laughs> Jeffrey Household, a fairly familiar name to, to, to most people, a rough shoot. Charles Raymond did the cover illustration on that one. A World of Difference, Stanley Price. This is 2274. Cover drawing by August von Bryson. Very nice, another Minter. Another real favourite of mine. This is uh, Love Me Do. The Beatles Progress, Michael Braun. I've had this one for a long time. The Beatles is my all-time favourite pop group. Absolutely love the Beatles. Great stuff. Very nice. Quite a collectible one, this. Although I think it had a fair old print run. So I think... You know, if you see it for more than a tenner, you're probably overpaying because um, the copies are out there. You just sort of need to be patient. Although it's saying that that's still, I think, the only one I've ever had of that one. There's a really nice book on the Penguin John Lennon, which I think is more desirable than that one. Um, but that will be in the next batch of uh, of titles that we look at. Um, 2284, this is Tennessee Williams, Three Players of a Summer Game and Other Stories. Very nice. 
And some of these are absolutely beautiful copies. Really, really pleased with them. Leave Me Alone. David Carp. Gian Otto Coppola did the cover design of that one. Oh, that's a few pages turned over there. Easily sorted. Han Suyin. Cast but one shadow and winter love. August von Bryson. And here's a great one. It's one... Um, when I did my little look at Anthony Pohl, um, it, this was the last penguin one I needed to track down. And it's also, I believe, the last one that they published before he moved over to Fontana for the last th sort of three. So the whole run is not done in this style, which is such a shame. Um, if you've never read Dance to the Music of Time, all I can do is say you, you, they're effortless reading. It's just fantastic. It's a 12 book series um spanning the best part of 25 years and it's just magnificent um, if you haven't got time to read the 12 books um channel 4 adapted it best part of 20 years ago also fantastic um but i do recommend the books they are fantastic and highly highly recommended okay so we're about halfway through so now is a perfect time to thank my patreon and channel member subscribers thank you very much okay so soldiering on here another absolute corker George Orwell, Decline of the English Murder, and other essays. So it was this exact edition that I first read a lot of George Orwell's uh, sort of essays and um, and letters and things like that, his reviews. And boy, oh boy, they're really, really fantastic. Um, let's just have a quick look of um, the little list of ones that are in there. And you'll notice that one, that's the most famous one, Decline of the English Murder. But... Um, uh, and his one on Charles Dickens is fantastic. What's not there is uh, Shooting an Elephant. That does appear in one of the later ones. And Penguin, you know, that was back in the 60s. Since then, Penguin have mined everything that uh, Orwell that ever wrote into uh, various editions. Arthur Upfield, Wings Above the Diamantini. Diamantini. And look, this is a Penguin crime, but you wouldn't notice it unless it said it, would you? Got the familiar crime covers on the spine and the back, but the front cover, not a hint of green. Unlike this one, Horace McCoy. I think we can guess the designer of this one. They shoot horses, don't they? Massini Virginia. I actually thought it was a Ron McMarber, so there me, shoot me down in, in flames. Um, <laughs> Uh, so there you go. You can't can't know them all, but I was certain that, that was a a Romic one. Um, another McBain, and they've they've just squeezed in the eighty seventh precinct along that hand. Is it a hand? Looks like it, doesn't it? Give the the boys a great big hand. Cover design, Alan Spain. So I really like Ed McBain. Now this is the first Penguin Modern Classic we've seen. The Apes of God, Wyndham Lewis. This is number 2313. Big old thick one, that. But we love the Penguin Modern Classics. They're a fantastic list in their own right. Here's another one. Italio Savio. Savio. As a man grows older. Cover drawing by Giovanni Thermes. A really distinctive look, haven't they? The Penguin Mon Classics. I do really like them. Horse Underwater, another classic. Michael Caine there. Len Dayton, author of the Ipcris File and Funeral in Berlin. There we are, having a little revival at the moment on the BBC. That's interesting. Got a little tipped in. 
something like cover design by Raymond Torkey, who also designed a few for Pam books around this time as well. The company she keeps, Mary McCarthy, 2327. It's a real sort of semi-psychedelic cover, that one, isn't it? Ah, Alan Aldridge, should have guessed. That's his sort of style, isn't it? Great, great designer. Is that Alan Aldridge? The Nun of Monza. Mario Mazzuccelli. Good stuff. Paul Gallica. Trial by Terror. This is one of his more famous ones. Giannetto Coppola again did the uh, cover design on that one. Very distinctive. Oh look, another real, I can't wait to get stuck into this, the Penguin Survey of Business and Industry for 1965. <laughs> dear, oh dear. Well, yes. For completists only, you could say. Here's another one. The Penguin Survey of Social Sciences for 1965. Hammered old copy of this one. Once again, look at this. It's a promo one. It's like an advanced copy. I suppose if you're going to own that book, you might as well have a have it slightly more special than usual. But blimmin' eh. Storyboard. John Boehm. Covered drawing by Quinton Blake, quite a famous uh, artist, and actually you can see it there now with sort of his uh, his angular, sketchy style. Looks actually like Quinton Blake, doesn't it? Brian Moore, an answer from Limbo. Now, looking at the cover style there, my feeling is the artist is Mel Kalman. Yeah, that Mel Kalman and Graham, and Graham Bishop. Um, so Graham, Mel Kalman does those um, uh, illustrations and, and the, the people in there have got massive noses, big round, robust noses. Here's a favorite of mine, an author I really like as well, J.G. Ballard, The Four Dimensional Nightmare. So Ballard was first published in Penguin, in paperback at least. Uh, the hardbacks are with Galantz. That's a particularly nice copy of that one. And uh, we'll see a lot more Ballard later on. And I think I'm going to pull out there one more and uh, make a bit of room just for the last batch. Okay, next we got this one by David Story. You've seen his name a couple of times so far. Brian Keogh did the uh, cover illustration for that one. Very nice indeed. Nice copy. Now we have another Simonon. Picture cover of this from The Fate of the Malice. And the thing about the Simonons, they're so short, aren't they? They're all done in a hundred pages, basically. But that's good because you know what you're gonna get, and you can you know fit one in on a train ride or something like that. Uh, two Cheers for Democracy, E.M. Forster. Another Simonon. Told you there was a few. The Window Over the Way. Michael Busetti was the photographer again. Let's just check the date on this one. Penguin, so in 1966 we are looking at here. So we've gone through about a year and a half to two years in what we've looked at today in Penguin, uh, penguin Design. Another Forster. Abinger Harvest, this is 2365, so we're not quite at 2400 just yet. Now, I believe the next three I have as part of a box set, but I put the books out loose with my main co uh, collection. So Parkinson's Law, so C. Northcott, Parkinson, and these all sort of fit together. So it's Parkinson's Law, The Law and the Prophets, and In-Laws and Outlaws. This is all sort of uh, a legal legal things i believe cover designed by osbert lancaster and leaf fryman anidal 
there we are but they all sort of fit together as a little set this one's fantastic i've got a couple of copies of this one i um, only brought the one down because it's big and heavy um but yeah the penguin book of the american civil war now this is 12 and 6 so really quite expensive but it's a complete illustrated guide to the uh the american civil war and it's it's really good it's it's a really i think a really great way to read it without going into massive depth and uh, i certainly uh, enjoyed this one myself so i recommend this one if you just want to know a little bit about the american civil war it's very very good as you would expect from penguin anyway that sort of thing that they do isn't it francois Sagan, wonderful clouds cover painting again by gianetto coppola another very thin little book this one just to touch over a hundred pages for that one it's a real mint of this 2375 angus wilson a bit off the map and other stories oh, it's actually been laminated and this one's got a cover designed by Ron McMarber. So that's nice and it'll just see it mint like that henry Cecil. according to the evidence another sort of legal-ish book kenneth mahood did the uh, cover design of that one Look at Picasso by John Berger. Success and failure of Picasso. Another one in the B format. I said we had a few of these today. This is looking at Picasso's life and work. Of course, people forget he was uh, a sculptor. He did uh, lots of pottery and plates and things as well as his artwork. Another synonym, possibly the last one today. A new lease of life. Look at that lovely black cover probably quite difficult to find that in nice condition michael brusetti uh, Bru yeah brussel again michael brussel did the design great cover that the body there lying in front of the headlights looks like a citron db5 uh, D D D dsv is it what's it called i can't remember the make of the uh the citron now but it looks like one of those jack trevor something for nothing 2391 that's actually like stamps christopher radley did that cover design very nice indeed the final mcbain today the heckler this isn't part of the uh, 87th precinct so it hasn't got that little 87th precinct logo anywhere but still it's a mcbain and his other stuff is excellent um, unfortunately, yeah, Private Eye. So this is a great, great book, but it got splattered when my son was in his high chair, and uh, a few of the books around this period got a little bit of damage. That is dried up Weetabix cereal, so you know I just haven't got round to getting this. But this is another one of their art books in B format. Private Eye was in a British satirical magazine that had started not long after this book was published, and uh, this is like a little best of with uh, the penguin itself being stabbed. <laughs> uh, brilliant stuff don't mind private eye it's not perhaps as good as it once was but it's still a bit of fun here's my favorite of the art books the penguin heath robinson so he did all those madcap and crazy sort of inventions which i really really love and this is a selection of them in here you recognize this style i'm sure great great stuff like heath robinson that's a really really good one that i wouldn't mind a better copy of that one Saw below, Herzog. Come from the charity shop with the gift aid certificate there. And then the last one we've got to look at today is The World in the Evening. Christopher Isherwood, 2399. So we'll start off with 2400 next time round in a month or so. But there we are. How cool was that? Some really, really interesting books there. I think you'll agree. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed looking through that latest batch of vintage Penguin books. Certainly some interesting titles there, some collectible titles there to keep an eye out for, and some fantastic cover designs. If you have enjoyed today's video, do please give it the thumbs up. Do please consider subscribing, if you've not already, for regular vintage Penguin content. And I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.